Hello, hello, Mr. Borneman. Hello, hello, Mr. Munsell. How are you today? I am good. I, uh, I apologize to everybody for the late start. I, um, I got sucked into a project that we had to beat a storm coming in. <laughs> and uh, I, Jimmy called me up and I was on a ladder trying to help my guys reel in some, some huge billboard sized banners um, that weigh like 100 pounds each. So, uh, so I, I, I rinsed off real quick. And today's one of these days, Jimmy, when, you know, you, you might need a, you might need a cold yingling while you, uh, while you wind it down as the sweat is just. Yeah. I'm just sitting here going, yeah, I'm feeling you. Yeah. You're feeling me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing up here in Michigan. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so to, today I, I mentioned last week that we were going to talk this week about some of the tools and some of the stuff that we've built for project management. Um, so I, I want to that we have uh, we have some fantastic topics. Um, Jimmy and I were talking a little bit earlier today, and we uh, you know we, we had a couple things come up, and I'm like, oh god, just write those down, save 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 them for the show. Uh, so we'll, we'll have to bring you guys through some of that, and you guys can. Uh, hear what goes on on the day to day. Um, but one, one of the big topics that we wanted to talk about today was projects, right, Jim? Absolutely. We live in them. We die in them. We uh, love to hate them. Yeah. So in our world, the, uh, you know, projects, you know, everything's a project. The, uh, but in, in reality, when we talk about a project, we, we, we're talking about one of the things that we specifically do which is we, we map out everything. So a project would be um, constructing a new location, right? Pretty you know, great example of one. Um, we're, we're upfitting you know, a new vehicle. And at first it's a project. And then in the future, it just becomes SOP. You know, it's like standard operating procedure. But when we do something for the first time, we, we always talk about it we, we get everybody that's, you know, what we call stakeholders involved. So if it's a, you know, a, say a new location, it's probably one of the best examples to start from, you know, a new location, when we, we talk about it, we, we want to get everybody involved. So in that case, it's the marketing folks, it's the operations folks, it's the sales folks who sold it. Um, you know, it's myself, it's the regional manager, the area manager. And we just, it's a quick process. I'm going to pull it up here, Jimmy. The, I'll pull up our document. The, uh, oh, cool. Good idea. We'll, we'll just walk right through it, kind of explain all the different aspects of it and kind of how it got built. The, uh, let's see here. So, projects 2021. So, so anyway, so today we're talking about project management and I want to share off, um, I'm going to share my screen with everybody. We can, uh, let's see if we can get there. The, uh, Okay. Okay, Jimmy, can you see that sucker? I can. Okay, so uh, for everybody, this is our, uh, you know, this is actually a, a launching board for us. You guys seen us kind of connect things before. Um, so here's the actual template. So I don't know how the view is. Yeah, do, do, do. How do I go bigger? Zoom. Let's go 150. Okay. You can still see it, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so projects are something that we live in every day. We, we always, I mean, we probably have conservatively right now, real, real projects. We probably have, you know, 40. <laughs> yeah, um, upper 30s. Yeah. I can think of, you know, the trailer, I can think of the container, I can think of the new vehicle upfit and redo. Um, we have several locations that we're, we're launching. We have three buses that we're building, um, you know, and then there's just the day-to-day -day stuff. <laughs> so whenever we launch something, we always go through this list right here. So if you guys can see it, um, we'll kind of just explain to you how we use it. But there's always a project meeting agenda. So we talk about the goals, right? And if you guys that know anything about me, this follows pretty much what we, we always talk about, which is the GROW model, right? So you have goals, reality, opportunity, way forward. So this follows that 
you know, because, you know, that we have the goals, then you have like timeline, budget and tasks. That's reality. <laughs> you know, the, uh, the unknowns, uh, that's one of the things we've added recently and you, you don't know what you don't know. Um, but I will tell you that if you can at least throw some things out there that could trip you up, it'll, it'll save you in the end. A lot of times you think about them and like they're in the back of your mind, but you don't say them. And those are the things that you actually, at that point, you want to say, we want you to throw those things out there. And and we bite right. you in the ass. From I'll bite you in the ass, right? There's, there's no doubt. The, so, so when we talk about, you know, the, the success criteria of our goals, first, there's a, a BHAD. What's that, Jimmy? Big, hairy, audacious goal. Yeah. The, uh, so that's like the, uh, the number one, right? So that's, that's like what, you know, what is success defined? You know, we get this thing open and make a million dollars. Um, perfect. Love it. Do it. Um, and then we break out and there's always like some subset goals, you know, it, whether it's, you know, we improve upon our training, we, we do some things, um, we, we always have a lot of R and D stuff. And I think, I think even for our team the other day, Jimmy uh, rolled everybody every Friday, Jimmy holds a, uh, like a productivity meeting and they kind of run through all the cool stuff that's happened for the week. And I happen to sit in on it and, you know, all these things that are flying around us all the time, Jimmy had, you know, pictures of it, all kinds of neat things. And I took everybody on a tour of, of the office and the, the tour wasn't about showing off the office. It, it was just showing the amount and level of activity and the size and scope of things that happened out of this, you know, this building and Jimmy's remote. And, you know, he actually moves a lot more mountains than I do. They're just all digital. <laughs> right. Most of the stuff I do is on the physical side. So, so, you know, you, you just got, you got to have goals. And then if you look over here, we've been, you know, snuck in this, you know, questions to consider. And these are just, as you're going through it and as somebody else is talking, you know, literally I like, I'm just reading those, you know, like technology is always something that we focus on and we always want to make sure that we consider, um, you know, key resources required for the project. You know, am I going to lose my, you know, the area guy for three weeks doing something, yep. you know, the cost to that. That's like, you know, it's not a dollar because their salary, but there's a, there's a cost to the rest of the organization that you need to be aware of. Um, budget, timeline, the uh, communication. And sometimes that's internal communication. Sometimes that's external. So we, we always are talking internal and external communication. How do we keep everybody up to date? And we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about how we do that today. Um, we use a couple different tools, but this is the baseline. And so we get our goals. Then the timeline, and I got to tell you, and I told Jimmy this today, you know, I, I press timelines pretty hard and there's a reason. It's the same thing when we talked about job descriptions, right? What do we say, Jimmy, about job descriptions? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Job descriptions, right? You got to make them big enough and have enough stuff on them for people to, you know, really work to, to get done, right? Absolutely so, true. We, we I, live, if you don't make them big enough, they get lazy and they go, oh, I'm doing it. Yeah. And then timelines are the same thing. If you put a timeline out there, my experience is things get lost. Most people do the majority of the work, you know, within 48 hours of the timeline anyway. So why not just bring that thing forward? <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, you have to get it done. You know, the, it's a terrible thing, but the, the world is, is full of procrastinators, myself included. And, yep. and I get a lot done, and, but it tends to be more gets done in a short amount of time because I put the pressure on myself than if I had three weeks to do it. It's so kind of I'm, like uh, the college cramming exams, right? You wait till the last day. Absolutely. And somehow I think that's where it, like I, I learned this tactic. <laughs> it was the fact that, you know, you, you could literally, you know, goof off for, you know, a whole semester. And then somehow if you just literally burn the midnight oil and got a couple friends around you that, that knew some of the pieces you didn't, you could figure it out. Wow, that sounds exactly how we do it around here. <laughs> yeah. We surround ourselves with smart people and somebody's going to get it done with us. Yeah. So, you know, timeline, timeline, you know, anything, it's just like a goal. A goal needs to be specific, measurable, attainable, you know, all those things, The but they need to have a timeline. So, you know, this project has a timeline. And I got to tell you, it, we, we miss timelines, you know, on occasion. Um, and 
the reason is because we, we have so many projects that inevitably one comes up since we planned that one that's maybe got a little bit more of a high speed priority to it. So, you know, and, and we accept that it's in some cases, some cases we just, you know, there is just a hard timeline that is never going to move and that's it, and whether it's contractual or whatever it is, you know, but we let our people know and it's, it's difficult to communicate everything in an organization all day, every day. And the people that work with you or for you, they, they need to have some level of understanding and respect for the fact that they don't have all the pieces. So when things happen and things change, they, they need to be able to, to be nimble enough to do that. I, I mean, it's a huge cultural thing in our company. Like ju just because you're working on it today and it's a priority, it, 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 your priorities may be different tomorrow based on the needs of the organization. And that's just literally build that in, put it in your orientation, let people know that. It's one of the, one of our management philosophies is, is that about, you know, things that don't grow, die. And so, and the same goes things that don't change or aren't willing to change or evolve. I mean, look at the world. The world is changing every day around us. Technology changing every day around us. Absolutely. And like one of it. our biggest problems too, Jonathan, is when they don't have all the pieces and they get stuck, if they get stuck there too long, they forget about it or they, throw their hands in the air and they don't keep moving forward on that project and somebody else needs that piece they're stuck on. And we really do need to figure out ways to help people get unstuck or watch from a distance when people are stuck or why things aren't moving. Maybe it was a new project. Maybe it's they missing a, a, a graphic or they're missing a spreadsheet that they, they need something to finish. And it, it just sits there and four months later, we go, what the hell? But anyways, getting stuck is a big problem. No, so what you just said was really important. So the, the thing that happens with projects and with multiple projects and, and larger organizations, the reason certain timelines are set is because they affect other people and other projects. Yep. And it, you know, just because you know, we we have a new marketing campaign, right? And you know, there's urgency around that marketing campaign. But the person who's like lead on that project, they it's their project. They're on a timeline. They're operating because they have to get that done. But the reality is, is that, you know, we have somebody else that's waiting for that baton, right? You know, the old relay race, Jimmy. That, let's go Olympics. In this, in simultaneously. And that's, that's a big word for us. Simultaneously. Most, most things in a, in a large, fast moving, growing organization are happening simultaneously, not sequentially. So people, people tend to want to do things sequentially. And it's something I've trained myself for, for the better part of 20 plus years that you, you have to like, you know, you keep all the plates spinning that kind of, you know, I, I want to invoke that in people's brains. Yep. If you just go and you spin that one plate, but all the other ones fall over here, man, you're, you're going to be in a, in a bad spot. Cause now you got to go get all those plates back up. And so it's, you gotta, you gotta keep them all, you know, every day, Jimmy, my plates. Yep. Yeah. moving rocks up and down yeah. the mountain yeah, yeah. Like boulders right you know some days some days you you, you got to push hard into some we call putting your shoulder into it some days you put your shoulder into it and you push that thing twice as far just be so you buy yourself a little bit of time as it's sliding back right yeah, yeah. yeah. and you go hit the other boulders and and rocks and and the pebbles count too which is tough yeah, and then you take that dead body and put it at the bottom of the boulder so it doesn't move. <laughs> yes, you got it. Anything, right? You know, my shoe, uh, anything that'll hold that thing in place for just a little bit. Yeah, but it's real. I mean, this is real. And I think a lot of business owners out there, they, they experience the same type of thing. And at sometimes if you're out there by yourself, you might feel like you're nuts. Um, one, if, if you own a business, you're probably nuts, but that's okay. Um, you're in good company, at least. So the, uh, so I'm telling you, you you just got to create some of this. These things are cultural. You have to build them. You have to indoctrinate them. You have to have some philosophies and things that you share with people as they come through. Otherwise, they'll 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 think you're nuts, even though you're you're you know you're you're not as nuts. And you're you're not crazy. You're just a little you know a little out there, a little so, wacky. Yeah. So when one of the things, and it's so funny, I want everybody to see, if you look at this tool and you hear things that we say, and we talk about all the time, we talk about pillars, right? The pillars of success. Yep. Well, what do you think is right next to this planning sheet? As we go down, it's all the pillars. So we don't miss any of them because every project at some level touches at least two or three of them. So the, 
these pillars are really, really important. We want to make sure that we, we don't miss on something. You know, we're starting a new location and that's recruiting, hiring, that's Jimmy and his folks building out the website, you know, the, the landing pages, the Google, the Facebook, all that stuff. So like that one location triggers everything in our company because everybody has to touch it. Things need to get updated. Signage needs to be printed. Menus need to be printed. Vehicles need to start moving. That means we got to get the vehicles and then we got to get the insurance and we got to get the utilities. And there's just a million things that we do this all day, every day. And we launched locations like, you know, if I remember opening my first restaurant, Jimmy, and it was, it was before I owned my own restaurants. Okay. I was building restaurants for somebody else. And I remember in the beginning, just thinking of like what a daunting task it is and what it takes. By the time I was opening my own restaurants, I had opened one, I had opened another, I had opened another. I mean, I, I was flying and I never would have thought in all my life that you, know, you could consolidate all those things that need to be done down to you know, a three month period. And nowadays we can get a location off the ground in three weeks. Yeah, right, isn't that the case? And it's funny how you mentioned that we took all of our years of restaurant openings and project management and construction management, and we learned everything way back when, and we're applying all of that to a, a project on building a website or building an app or building reviews or building a store or building a car, getting it up, and each piece feeds upon each other, but it's stuff that we learned way back when, and I never, never thought I'd apply any of that to where we're at today, but that's where we live. Here we are. Yeah. So, um, so Jimmy, earlier when we were talking, you, you were, you were talking to me because yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy's more office based than me. He's, you know, he's literally got his finger on the pulse of, of multiple companies that we have. And, you know, he tends to become a sounding board, you know, people like Jimmy listens um, well, J Jimmy's listening for the gold. Okay. It's generated listening. He's listening. <laughs> for the gold. Um, I this a long time ago. Um, you know, Jimmy's empathetic, you know, but the, the thing he's doing is he's, he's making sure that he understands where that person is, what their frustration levels are. Um, and he's also understanding like, you know, he takes all of that, you know, if he has 10, 20 conversations in a day, it gives Jimmy a, a feeling about what the company is doing. And then we'll end up, you know, late night doing something like this and, and we'll talk about it. But today I talked to him and he said he was grumpy and I never <laughs> hear grumpy. Was grumpy and he was grumpy. So why were you grumpy? I was just like you said, empathetic. It just kept listening to everybody and it felt like children on the playground throwing rocks while we being the teachers and the principals were trying to corral the kittens. And I couldn't get anything. It's like, why are I'm over here busting my ass, sweating like crazy, trying to get things done, and you guys are bitching about who moved the pencil? <laughs> Not really, but it's it's important. So, so minor. But to yeah. them, it was major. To me, it was like, I don't got time for this shit. But to them, it was a big deal that day. At that moment, it was a big deal, right? To them, it was important. You're bitching about yeah. what's on the menu at lunch, and you're like, there's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that piece of bacon. I'm done. I'm out of here. <laughs> I think your school analogy is, is probably one of the best ones. You know, think about it. You know, the, the principal of the school has to worry about everything, right? They got to worry about, you know, the, the curriculum and, you know, the, the standards of the state and the, they got to worry about the, the physical education and the, you know, the timing and the bells and the whistles, they got to do all that. Right. And then you get somebody, you know, the gym teacher comes in and, and they're pissed off because, you know, they, they need four soccer balls and they'll, they burn 10 minutes of the principal's time talking about four soccer balls that like the principal is like, you know, here, I'll give you the money out of my pocket. Go get four freaking balls and leave me alone. <laughs> Alone. Then go to five below. See yeah. you, bye bye. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think, and, and what that's one of those things, Jimmy. It goes back to the time management. If you guys have never listened to our time management uh, principles, it's huge. You know, you you can't you can't waste your time, you know, doing or dealing with the work of you know, say a ten dollar an hour employee, because if you're at that level, you're not moving the levers that you need to be moving to to make the the thousand and million dollar decisions. And all of a sudden you're, you know, you're making a decision over four soccer balls that in, in your mind, you know, we spend more than that on, you know, coffee for a meeting. 
so, you know, so it's, but it's interesting, people get sucked in all the time. And, you know, I don't believe in an open door policy. I don't know if you guys know that, right? The, you know, the door may be open, it just doesn't mean you can always come in. Uh, <laughs> it means I'm hot. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, I'm, when I'm in the office, especially when I'm in the office, if I got to get something done, I hide. That's a fact. <laughs> You know, if I definitely like don't want to be messed with at all, I will just, you know, go to my quiet place and, you know, I, everywhere I go, you know, here's one of my mechanisms behind me, Jimmy, the, uh, this is the one that was built for my bed. <laughs> so I can work in bed. <laughs> I'm on the front of it, right? This is where the laptop goes. Yeah. Uh, right. So imagine this thing swinging out over me in bed, right? You know, I, I have a 43 inch monitor, uh, you know, and again, it goes back to having the right tools and equipment to do what you want to do when you want to do it. And it's building your lifestyle. But, you know, I like chilling out in my comfy bed, and you know, having the TV on and, you know, watching a show, but half watching it and, you know, cruising through the not important stuff. Right. When else do you check Facebook and, you know, emails my nemesis? Um, yep. When else do you go? You, know, you got to do it at some point. Might as well do it while I'm relaxed and you know comfortable. But, you know, it's on there. Right. You know, it. The, uh, what's scrolling behind me. I do. I'm really excited to see it. So uh, if you guys don't know, the uh, Jimmy's been working on a project. We, we want to have digital displays um, at all of our locations. And they're really, really cool. It doesn't matter what brand. It can be the, the Pronto Wash brand, the Pronto Clean brand. Um, you digital, if you think about it, what's, what's everybody doing these days? TikTok, right? They're <laughs> right. You know, it's video. People need more, right? And and signage, which we have great signage and branding, it's just flat. This thing behind me, I'm sure people have been seeing it clipping through different things um, as, as we go. But the it's it's a digital display. So Jimmy's figured out how to how to work with the graphics guy, and we have a tool that we can actually upload to all the locations, whatever our current promotion is. So that's pulling off of right there's pulling off of Instagram. So it's got a direct feed and it's just rolling different stuff, right? And, you know, I'm telling you, that's that's one of those, Jimmy, I, I was wondering if you were going to say anything about it because it's usually not in my office. No, I, was, I, I like where you have it placed because it is, there's some real power in that that tool right there. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, you know, just think about the ability to sell. I mean, look at, like I was at the, um, I was at the airport, I was in line uh, getting food before I got on a flight, right? They don't serve food on planes anymore. <laughs> You're lucky if you get a bag of nuts. Um, I'm nuts. Yeah. The uh, so you know, I'm standing there, and you know, every single restaurant in the food court had you know big old monitors. You know, they didn't have like old school printed signs. And the beauty of that is, oh, I want to change my prices. <laughs> you know, I just raised that thing. You know, twenty nine cents. Nobody's ever going to know. They, they, you know, I don't. You, you can do it overnight. You can do it in the morning. You can do it in the middle of the day. Nobody's going to see anything. Oh, I'm out of a product. I take it off there. And I, my staff, we don't have to go, I'm out of that, out of this, out of that, out of this. Yeah. And during COVID, I went to a couple of restaurants and they'd hand you a menu. And the menu literally like had a uh, dry erase marker, like crossing out, like, you know, a dozen things. And I'm like, oh my God, just print a new one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we're okay. so sorry for your luck, guys. What do you have left? <laughs> yeah. It's better than, you know, or even better, right? What, what, it, I loved it before, but the whole idea of like, you know, the QR code to a menu, I always thought was brilliant. And then wham, COVID comes and that thing is like everywhere. And now it's, you know, it's everybody knows how to do it. It's standard. I look for it. I'm like, like three years ago, they were fading out QR codes. Yeah. So boom. So anyway, back to the project stuff. <laughs> so, you know, and I'll share this with our group. The uh, so if you guys are part of Success Systems, I'm, I'll give you guys a, a version of this with the video, so you guys can uh, check it out. If you're not, um, I'm sure Kim will make it available to you. You'll have to, you know, cr climb a mountain, cross a river, uh, and we'll make it as difficult as we can for you to get it. <laughs> uh, but we'll make it available to folks. But it's a great tool. So you know, and you li we literally list out every single task and we bounce it off of the pillars. So if you don't understand what the pillars are, um, it's part of my simple plan, which is out there in a couple different places, but you know, you got to consider all these. And then we put on their barriers. You know, we talk about barriers all the time in our company. What's holding people back? Because if I can eliminate their barriers, right, then I can, you know, and I ask it all the time and I'm like, do you have any barriers? And they're like, nope. Well then, 
why aren't you doing your job? <laughs> back, to, back to me being an empathetic listener, I'm <laughs> listening for the barriers to get them solved so they can get back to the productivity that Jonathan's requiring. So I'm always just listening for what's wrong and what's broken and why can't they get what they need? And usually it's just human error, but that's a lot of where I was grumpy today was back to that for a second. It's just too much listening, not enough doing. Yeah, and, and sometimes you got to turn it off. I mean, I, that's a real thing. I, I So I talked to Jimmy and we, we talked about a couple of concepts that we, we actually wholly share and utilize in the company really, really well, I think. But, uh, you know, one of the things I told him is, you know, time blocking, you know, maybe you don't, you know, like, instead of literally spinning every plate every day, it's kind of like I talked about, you know, I push that rock up the hill twice as far sometimes so I, I can, I can leave it for a little bit and go attend to other things. Same thing. Maybe there's just, you know, certain days you, you know, you're not going to be that empathetic. Yeah, I'm just not going to be that available. Yeah, I'm just not that available, guys. In other days, you know, you're chilling out and, you know, the timing's good and it works and you're in the right frame of mind. Maybe, you know, that's another thing. If if you're not in the right frame of mind to to, to deal with, you know, your people or with your business, you know, you go take a walk. You got to go, you got to go be there. You got to show up and it's tough every day, showing up every day. It's hard. The other thing, Jimmy, that I, I was... I mentioned to you and I can show it here. I'm going to stop sharing it. If I'm still sharing the, uh, the, the, let me stop this because I can do a different version for you. So, do, do, do. okay. One of the things while you're looking, I wanted to make sure we didn't forget the circle of influence in your yeah, area okay. of control. Yep, that's exactly where I'm going to. So, oh, okay. Uh, can we all, we got enough room to see past my big stupid chair? Okay. So, uh, here. There we go, Jimmy. Okay. You Love see. the old school. Right? Oh yeah, we got one of these. This thing even flips around. Got the, uh, oh, you want the other, you want the other side? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you can see that though, right? It's pretty. pretty bit. You're oh, above oh, your head. We can't see, so keep it below, below your neck yeah. as you're drawing. Going there to you see. go. We don't need to see you. Just draw the circle. Piles <laughs> right now. <laughs> the uh. Oh, funny. So, uh, okay. There. there we go. Now we got the top. He's not ready to write down here anyway. But so Jimmy and I were talking and I, I mentioned to him, I go, you know, we all have this big circle, right? And that's the circle of influence. Can we see it? The, uh, that circle is just a big old circle on a, on a whiteboard. Yeah, your red oh. didn't come through so good. The, uh, We'll, we'll make it twice as big, okay? It doesn't really matter. It's a big circle. <laughs> there you go. All right. And the problem is, is that people spend a tremendous amount of time and energy focused on that big circle. But the reality is, the reality is that they only have this, okay? So this right here, this is the circle of influence. I have the worst handwriting in the world, okay? But this right here is your area of control, okay? So the, the, the point of it is I can't worry about everything in the world. I can't worry about every single government policy that changes every minute of the day. You know, I just can't, right? right? Does it affect me? Do I have an opinion on it? Sure. But you know what I can do right here? I can, I can do my finances. I can pay my taxes. I can make sure that I'm taking care of the things that I control. It's you know, the thing that happens a lot of times in organizations and I see it and I, you know, people don't stay in their lanes. You got to keep people in their lanes. And when the thing that Jimmy was dealing with was, people were commenting on other people's areas of control. Right. And the reality is, is they don't get a goddamn influencing word on that. Nope. You know, it's their, it's not their place. So, you know, and sometimes, you know, I, I think, you know, we'll share this with everybody, but you know, we, we, we influence a ton of things, but we can really only focus on us and what we do in that area of control. And yep. you know that, and you focus on your stuff. Your stuff is bulletproof, okay? Yep. The thing that ends up happening, which is kind of cool, 
is this actually starts to grow and you get yep. more control you know the, that's like but you got to have your area of control needs to be on lockdown it and does on lockdown and it's so funny and you can't worry about other people's like you said their area of control you might have an opinion on it but it's their area of control their expertise their knowledge and you can give them a little bit of not a little bit of a grain of salt to help them but it's really theirs and if you give them too much you're just annoying them you're you're taking them off focus you're you're just complaining and if you don't you bring what was that, oh, what was that one? <laughs> you're just it's complaining great. You're complaining. Oh, you know what? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I live by, if you're going to bring me a problem, but you don't bring me a solution, then you're just complaining and walk the hell out my door because I don't have time for for this shit. I just don't yeah. anymore. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm a GSD guy, right? And it's right? done. Like, I mean, it's it's fine to talk. It's fine to lollygag. I mean, I, I hear it. You know, I got folks that work with me, folks that work with me for a long time. And, you know, they're telling me all of the, the the minute details of what they have to go and do to get something done. The reality is, at the end of the day, it all of that doesn't matter because you. Yes, I get you got to go drive over there. And what was what was the quote this week? I'd rather. I, I'd prefer not to. I prefer not to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of stuff that I would prefer not to do. <laughs> we actually had somebody go. No, I prefer not to do that. Yeah. Okay. Well. And we went. It's still getting done. It's getting done that way. Oh. Uh, that's funny. So yeah, and it, yeah, it's gonna get done, and it's gonna get done exactly that way. So the uh, I I prefer not to do a lot of things, but it, sometimes you just you gotta do it. So it, that's kind of like where I wanted to go. What are the, you have any other good notes? Sorry, I said jot down a couple of things. Area of circle of influence, area of control. I think is a great one. Yeah, we talked about the schoolyard. Everything's yep. operationally, everything's management. You just got to figure out how to manage time and people to get the, the output that you need. And sometimes that's really hard hurting the kittens and you just got to know when to say enough is enough because you're not going to get them to do what you need them to do at that moment because their head's not there. You know, they're just not in that place to get that one thing done. And if it can wait till tomorrow and their subconscious works on whatever they're held up on or stuck on tomorrow, you help them get unstuck and we can keep moving. But it's really about managing the, we, you and I like to call them the herd of kittens, trying to get these cats. Like, you ever try to herd kittens? Like, it's like, you know, you, you got a litter of kittens, you're trying to get them back in their little pen. Like, <laughs> no good. Yeah, it's, it's like herding kittens. Yep. So, you know, I mean, and again, like, uh, it was kind of like our, one of our final comments was, when we were on the phone earlier, I was like, I was like, Jimmy, the most important thing we can do is we can, we can put them on, they gotta be on a timeline. Like the projects have to be on a timeline. Yep. And then the, the bigger problem is how do you manage that? Okay. Yep. And, you know, we use a tool and we actually share it with our clients. It's not one of ours. Nope. We you know, we, we can't build it all, but uh, we, you know, I use Basecamp and I used to use Evernote. I was a big fan of Evernote for a long time. I, I, you know, I think you might've tried Trello for a while. I still um, use Evernote and I still use Twello for our development projects. Our IT team uses Twello to move things down the line. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, so what, you know, Basecamp and the reason that I'm stuck on Basecamp is because you can have a project, that project has, you know, you can have a message board so you can communicate, you know, kind of globally to all the people that are in that that project, you can have different people. Like, you know, Jimmy's not in every project that I deal with and I'm not in every project that he deals with. So you can like kind of plug people into it um, in different places that, and on a need to know basis, which I like, right? Back to keeping people in their lanes because yep. if you let everybody know everything, they, they'll spend more time focusing on the shit that they don't actually control. <laughs> um, um, and, and they, they won't get the, the real important stuff done. And I'd rather them get the important stuff done and done faster than to worry about, you know, all these other great ideas and stuff. Um, I am an idea guy and I love getting ideas. So I, I do encourage people to share in, in that context. And I had a guy yesterday mention something about a car cover. You know, he's like, oh, you know, you know, you, you know we should get some car covers. And he didn't really have an end game. And my immediate go-to was, you know, what a great item to give somebody if they're on subscription for car care with us, how nice would it be to give them a nice logoed, you know, you know, Pronto Wash Elite, you know, um, 
you know, car cover. And literally within five minutes, the, the beauty of having a whole creative team down the hall um, is, you know, literally in five minutes, I had car covers, you know, the vision of them, uh, you know, in front of me and they looked as badass as I thought they would. <laughs> so. yeah. And see, I took it a different route going the membership part in the high end. I went and found the disposable ones that we can use at airports when we got to put them back out in the elements that, you know, they're just little plastic things that still say front of wash on them, but we are, they're the biodegradable plastic. So it's just a different, you know, different thing that we were working on, but same, same outcome or same project. Different outcome. And they're biodegradable plastic. Let me do it. So in what, what is the half-life on that, on that thing? Like a thousand years? Oh, that was the word they used. We know they're bullshitting us, but nonetheless, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I digress as it gets late. The uh, So I ordered a case of those, by the way, Jimmy. I have them coming nice. in the office. I think they'll be here by Friday. The, uh, I thought that was another brilliant one. The uh, What a great idea. You know, you have some, because in parking garages and parking decks and stuff, you get a lot of dust. Yep. Uh, you know, we, you know, usually we're doing a service the day of and delivering it. Um, you know, whenever we do airport stuff, we do it within 24 hours. But what about that person that like we cleaned their car today, but maybe they're not going to use the car until Saturday. And, you know, now they got it washed on Tuesday because that's when we were there. Or that's when we had an availability, but now it's Saturday and they go to drive their car and it's dusty. You know, yeah. one thing, you know, you can, you can leave them a, a nice microfiber towel and maybe your, you know, your products with it, which would be a, a nice touch that yeah. they can then touch up their car. But, you know, I, so I, I bought a case of those. I'm going to, I want to roll and see what the disposable ones do. And it's six o'clock. We'll slap a big sticker on it, you know, the logo it for V1. There's always yeah, a exactly. one. Well, one, of our, one of my challenges was our, in Portland, it's a very rainy and misty environment. And when we're done, it's ballet. So they go back out into the open air. They're not underneath. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. your windshields are going to be all watery and dotted good. and it's just going to suck. It's going to look like we didn't do our job. Yeah, and then you're going to get complaints or you're going to get little ratings, you know. So that's where I like that, you know, as, as a group, you know, from one idea about just really at the end game was excellent customer service and delivering quality products, right? You know, core principle. And the end game became, you know, a couple other things that we're going to roll. And those are projects. So here's what's going to happen. That's like going to go on a list. Yep. So yeah, I was like just going to say. That's like the easiest thing to do is spend money and, and buy something. Um, <laughs> okay, I take that thing. We got it one. We, we'll, we'll bring it to our office. We'll try it out. You know, it could be a piece of garbage. I'm not going to roll something across the country that's garbage. So, you know, we'll try it out. We'll leave it on a car for a week and let it bake in the sun and get rained on and, you know, and see what it's like to pull that sucker off. You know, the biggest, you know, and already it was kind of interesting when we were talking about people were talking about, you know, oh, you know, people are just going to take them off and leave them there. You know, we need to be on the lookout for that. If, you know, we're doing that process and people are, it's, it's disposable, doesn't mean that they're going to dispose of it properly. Um, yeah. You know, and that was the other thing I thought about with actually giving people uh, physical car covers, like nice custom car covers. They're not cheap. Nope. Uh, was to also have some tour type of, you know, container that kind of, you know, if you're in a parking deck, you know, there's always a little bit of room in front of the car, you know, to give them a container that when they take it off, right, you know, I have car covers for some of my cars, you know, take it off, you got to ball that thing up, you know, give them somewhere to put it. So it's not just like, what do I do now, right? Okay. So, that was always the challenge with the whole concept. Yep. Yeah. So little things. And, you know, again, I think if you come at things with their, with a really broad, scope and you you noodle through the ups and downs and the possible variables and the unknowns and you have the right people right one of the things that you know, i have a couple guys on our team that are are high speed low drag um that, that's a, a a nod to a buddy of mine dave welsh um high speed low drag right former military guy and they we have guys on our team that are high speed low drag what do they do they end up ruffling people's feathers because they <laughs> pop in like you know a bull in a china shop well, the reality is, is that maybe more people need to be high speed and low drag and you maybe you won't get ass chapped when, you know, this guy comes through because the, the reality is, and, and my comment about one of our guys on our team was, was he saying like the right things, right? You know, he got, he got to a location and they turned away a service, one of my favorites, right? You know, and he's like, well, I'm right here. I'll do the service. But didn't, you know, or the operation isn't right. They're not doing the right things. They're not in uniform. Well, 
yes, it's his job to call that stuff out. And if, again, back to culture, you know, maybe the culture's soft and that's why people get ass chapped when you say something that's real. It's not an insult, it's a fact. <laughs> Right. Yeah, and we all don't like criticism. Oh, it's like, right? We, we have a policies and procedures. It's right here. It's not me. It's not you. The fact that I'm delivering the message, I'm trying to help you. Because I'm telling you, if Jonathan rolls through here, he's going to cut your head off. Yeah. Do you remember three weeks ago when he was here? Ooh, yeah. That was painful. The worse. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty direct. I'm pretty direct. I like that fun with the crew. But if I show up and I, I, I equate it to the, the old health inspection, Jimmy. Yes. Right, the health inspector comes to your place, and everything's perfect. They're, you know, everybody's using gloves, and they have, you know, hair nets, and every, you, know, they can see the sanitation buckets, they can see the time and temperature logs. Everything is just like they walk in, and they just get a sense that the place is put together and organized. What do they do? They don't look very hard and go on to the next one. What happens when they roll up and the first thing they see is, you know, some guy with no gloves going like this as he's making somebody's sandwich, you know, and there's no sanitizer buckets, right? So it starts there and then they start looking around and it's one, then it's two. And they finally, they just say, you know what, if I can just see these simple things from the surface, imagine what it looks like in the things that you can't see that are deep down. So if That's I they call game on and then they go to your cooler you know, your little, oh. um, then they start looking at those things and you're screwed. Or they yeah. look at your pop gun and it's gooey and they're like, yeah, oh. they're, yeah they're, you know, they're, they're back there. They're sticking their hand up inside your ice machine, which like I can go to any restaurant on the planet right now and stick my hand up there and find something. <laughs> right. We don't want to mention that to people, but yeah, that's a true thing. But the reality is like, but that's what happens. So when I show up and everything's perfect and everybody's dressed and the, and all the lanes are right. Like I'm there and I, I, I have fun. I show up and it's fakaka is the term I use. Man, first I fix it, okay? Like I will move until it's right, you know? And then I spend the rest of the time educating them because if that's messed up, imagine what their hiring looks like. Imagine what their training looks like. And I'm telling you, they're indicators, they're symptoms to bigger problems. Yep, always is the case. And people get upset about it and then they go and they run around and talky talky and next thing you know, everybody's talky talky. How about you go fixy fixy? You know, <laughs> like, like enough's enough. So, you know, but again, define the projects, define the roles, define the timelines, and then hold people accountable. That's their job. Okay. All these people that work for us and work for you, you know, business owner out there, they came and they applied for a job. They asked for work. And your job, you said, you know what? I'm going to be a nice guy and I'm going to give you the work. And then they want to bitch about the work when they have to do it. I'd remind them of that time when they didn't have a job and they came to you looking for a job and you gave yep. them a good job. Yep. Yep. You know, and, and one part there, the business owner gives them the job and there's a lot of shame on us and shame on the business owner too, because if you don't put that time and energy, we talked about a couple of weeks ago into the training and into showing that employee love then you get what you give, right? If I'm going to give you a bullshit non-training job, I'm going to get bullshit output and I'm going to be pissed at the output, but I don't look at myself because I didn't train that guy right. So when we talked about those little things that are broken, a lot of times we got to look internally to figure out why it's broken. Is it us? Is it them? Is it our systems? Is it a person? I mean, that's a whole nother call that we'll do. But and Sometimes Jimmy, you know, you've done enough, right? I mean, yep. I play baseball. You know, it's one strike, two strike, three strikes, you're out. Go sit down, son. And, and, and you know, it's an unwritten rule. I mean, it's a, in the cosmic. It's That's how it works. Boom, boom, boom. Somebody Sometimes else is going to come in. You got you to gotta get rid of people or you got to move them. Like, you know, I'm a big, uh, you know, being putting people in the right seats on the bus, right? The old good to great concept. Yep. Uh, you know, but, you know, you can, you, I move them and then I move them and then I move them right towards the exit. Yeah, and I'm, I like to pull the pitcher out when he's just tired. He's just not getting it done. Put him on the bench, bring another pitcher in to save it. Not to talk baseball, guys, but. Oh, love it. What a great time of year to talk baseball, Jimmy. Like right? <laughs> and if he, we put him back in and the same thing happens, move him down to the minor leagues. And if the minor leagues can't happen, it, sorry, dude, you're retiring. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's a part of it. But back to the projects, we do a planning sheet, guys, and then we talk through it and we bullet 
we tear it apart, we look for everything that we could possibly go wrong and right. And then from there, we put it into our, our um, what do you call it, our, our base camp. And we task out who's gonna do what, when they're gonna do it. And then we follow up and we track that those things are done. And most of my job is watching those tasks, who's doing what and what's broken because Jonathan's expecting this one project to be done three weeks ago and it's not, and I'm gonna hear about it. Not that it, he's coming to me because it's my responsibility, but we needed that this week and they had two weeks to get it to us. And now we can't do this one thing because it's not done. Yeah. So I'm going to hear about it and I, I hate hearing about it. So then, you know, I watch for those little details, but planning sheet to working it through to our base camp, to, to tracking it to finished. Yeah. And it's, then, timeline. it's timeline. And the reason we use base camp is because it has digital reminders, you know, it's basically yeah. a, a calendar and, you know, you can go and you can sit down with somebody and you can pull up their, their activity yep. and you can see overdue you know, reminders, you know, yep. it's like, okay, what about this? 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 Yeah, yep. I did it. Forgot to tell you, forgot to go to base camp, forgot to check it off, forgot, forgot, forgot. And yeah, it's just biggest, as bad as not doing. And the biggest, the biggest thing that I realized as you know, the bigger we get, you have to put the tools in place, the, the checker, of the system is is equally as important as all the other front level work that we do, because if you don't have that really transparent accountability, we you know we send out exception reports, yep. right? Kind of like the naughty list. You don't want to be on the naughty list. Nobody does. No, nope. right? it almost like self manages itself out, you know, because they know that it, you know if something's due at Friday at three o'clock at Friday at three o one. Uh, you know, somebody's going and checking that thing. And if it's not there, there's going to be a report that comes out and their name's going to be on it. And I'm telling you, it sucks, but it's, that's a real tool that I, I suggest whatever systems you build, you have at least a hard stop point, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, quarterly, whatever, um, that you go back and review, or you have built in just mechanisms that, you know, keep you abreast of, of things that are, are committed to, you know, we, we get people to agree to the commitments um, and then we hold them to it and they can change them, but you got to change them in advance. You can't come up to me, you know, it's, it's, it was due 10 minutes ago and you tell me that you don't have it. That sucks. If you want to change a commitment, you come to me, you know, two days before and say, you know what, I'm having a little bit of tough time hitting that schedule. I got this, this, and this, right. I don't really want to hear the excuses, but the, uh, you know, that's what's going on. Can I have, you know, two more days? Sure. They better be there in two more days. I, you know, cause now it's like, you know, the unknown decisions are I'm now going and doing three different other things because I got to go communicate to other people that things aren't going to happen in the sequence or in the order in the timeline that we talked about. So, yeah. and then I got to come to you and tell you that I need more time. And now you're aware that my project is off. Now your radar's on to watching what the hell I'm doing. So it makes it even more uncomfortable for that person in the future. Cause all of a sudden you're realizing, Oh, oh. no, I do heck? respect those people though. Like that, like, the kids that would like, they give out the homework assignments for like the week and they would just go home and crush them that night. You know, yeah. like I, I have a, a different appreciation. Oh, that's right. Those guys got A's. <laughs> Remember, we already said we were the guys that waited till the end of the night before and we got C's, but we're running the company and they're working for us. So what the hell? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, anyway, Jimmy, we are, we are past the top of the hour. I, I, again, I apologize for running a little bit late there, but uh, what a great conversation. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll field a, a couple pieces of this. We'll see what come back in comments and we'll see if, uh, you know, anybody wants us to expand on anything that we're, we talked about today just so they can, you know, a lot of people just like more data, which is great. I love, I'll talk business all day, every day. And um, maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll do a question and answer call. We'll have people call in like a radio show, Jonathan, and we'll just help people through the, we'll, we'll send out an email to all of our folks and say, we're here to answer your questions the best we can. We're not, we're not you know, lawyers and accountants and doctors, but we'll do our best to, to guide you through your problems. Oh, Jimmy, I, yeah, the, yeah, the disclaimer, you know, no matter what we, no matter what advice we give you, you know, make sure you see your lawyer, your doctor, your, <laughs> uh, you your know, priest. No, yeah. <laughs> to just be like, you know, running across the screen. Uh, just give you what real life experience that works. Those guys, are, you know, might tell you a little bit differently. <laughs> but, yeah, we're the school of uh, hard knocks. So there you go. And what, what's your saying? The uh, we appear to be an overnight success. Yes, it just took us ten years of overnights to get here. Yeah. Oh my God, love it, love you, brother. Love uh, you too. Yeah.
enjoy, I love our time together. And hey, great job with the, uh, the digital display boards. Excellent, excellent stuff. I'm glad we're, uh, it's all coming together, one thing at a time. But You're not um, as grumpy as you are, so something's going better. Uh, I, I forgot my answer to grumpy. <laughs> ah, hey, I'm going to go crack a yingling and fix my grumpy. Okay, love you. Love you, see ya. See everybody out there, reach out if you need us. Bye-bye, guys. Yeah.